All right, we're here talking with Sundance Head, winner of The Voice 2016. That was a great season if everybody watched it. I mean, really entertaining, and uh, America turned out for Sundance, and we're all happy for it. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, what have you been doing since you won in 2016? Well, uh, one on one, we did. Um, we ended up going on tour with Blake Shelton. We did the Do It to Country tour with him and Arenas. Uh, you know, and then uh, after that, we ended up signing with CAA Nashville. We did 280 dates on the road with them. Uh, I had a contract with Republic New York, which was a hip hop record label. Uh, that that record never was released. <laughs> so uh, now we're starting over. We've signed with a record label. Dean Dillon's Wildcatter Records, and our album Stained Glass and Neon will be out this Friday. What's the name of it? Stained Glass and Neon. Stained Glass and Neon, oh. okay. Give us a sense of what, what's on it. Well, it's a very traditional country record. There's a lot of uh, great songs with uh, beautiful melodies and uh, stories, you know, what, I, what I, the things that I really love about country music. Uh, tradition, family, you know, history, things like that. Did you... Now, t tell me about the writing. Did you write it? I did. I, I wrote a couple of songs on the record. We had um, some of the greatest songwriters in Nashville give us some songs because of who Dean Dillon was, not because of who I am. Uh, so we were able to have a first cut record out of Nashville with some of the top writers, which has hardly ever been done. So I'm really thankful that Dean's in my camp and he was able to talk them into trusting us with some of their songs. Yeah. So you still stay in touch with Blake? I do. I do. I just text Blake and let him know that I was here at the SHOT Show really? uh, and getting some case knives made. And uh, Probably jealous. Well, I'm going to send him one. He's yeah. like he needs another case knife. You yeah. know, he's got probably a, a mansion somewhere full of knives on the wall. <laughs> so, well, how, how did you end up here at the SHOT Show? Uh, well, I actually uh, contacted Case, uh, met my buddy, uh, and then uh, he decided to bring me out here. Mm -hmm. So we came out here to, to uh, perform at their beautiful stand out here. They got the corner spot, right. ideal spot right, right here. Right, right on Main Street as you come in the, right on Main come Street. In the gate, really. That's it's right. A, so you, you, you mentioned yesterday you had a kind of a special relationship with Cage Knives and dating back to a story. You sure, sure. Can you share that again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, my brother passed away in a car wreck in 88, and my mother, after a few months of not letting anyone in the room, said, you can go in and have anything you want. And so the first thing that I went to was his records, and the second thing I went to was his knives. And uh, he had several case knives that my grandpa had given him, and I still have them to this day, and I still use them. And uh, I can't wait to pass them down to my children, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully it stays in our family for 100 years, you know. You know. Uh, so I, I love case knives. I love the fact that they're American and they're handmade, and they, they put a lot of uh, value and tradition, and uh, just a wonderful company. I'm fortunate enough to have met, uh, you know, the people that work for the company and seen how everything goes inside. It's, it's just one of the greatest companies we have left in America. Now you're a Texan, right? I am. Where'd you grow up? I grew up north of uh, Houston, Texas, in a place called Porter. <laughs> Nobody yeah. knows where it is. It's the gateway of the north. For Texas, I guess it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, sure. So. And, and you grew up hunting and fishing as a kid? I did. Yeah. Yes, sir. We, we hunted and fished uh, all our life. That's still what I do. Um, when I'm not on the road or spending time with my family, I'm in the woods or, uh, you know, in a deer stand. And if uh, I can have it my way, they're with me and we're doing both of those things. Yeah. I enjoy hiking and camping and uh, cooking out in the wild open. I love cooking yeah. on a fire. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned you, you had a kind of a unique experience using a case knife to actually you, on a deer you took last year. That's right, yeah. It's actually this knife right here, which I do carry on the road with me everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I carry this this mini copper lock. And it, it's my favorite knife. It's uh, it's it's perfect for cleaning. I cleaned a whole, I cleaned two white-tailed deer with this. About 130 pounds each one of them, uh, from, you know, from the field to the cooler. So you don't need a big knife to do it. You just need a real good knife to do it. <laughs> So do you, st you still live in that area? I still do. do we you? have 100 acres up in uh, East Texas, and I love East Texas. We do a lot of business in Nashville, California, and New York, but I prefer to live uh, in East Texas where my family mm -hmm. is. You know, I love uh, I love the small small town that I live in. It's getting bigger by the day, but uh, one of my favorite stores to go in when I'm back home is actually uh, Community Ace Hardware, and they have one of the largest case knife selections that I've seen. Uh, and I, I know the owner, Arlen, and so um, when I have to go purchase something, I go to his store. I, I know that uh, 
in some cases I may pay a couple dollars more for some things than I would at Lowe's or Home Depot, but I'm proud that I actually know the owner and the money stays in my community, so I prefer to go there. Now you've got some kids. I have three kids. Uh, Levi's 12 and Perseus is 10 and um, Brass is 5. You introducing them to the outdoors at all? Oh, absolutely. As soon as I get home, uh, as soon as I got this airplane tomorrow, me and my five-year-old son are going up to Maydale to camp for three days. Nice. I've got uh, a hog problem they're eating. I've got some gravity feeders and they'll, they'll just eat 500 pounds of corn one time. Is that really? That's true. So uh, we're going to go up there and see if we can trick them. Get some baby back ribs. <laughs> Get some baby back ribs. Um, now, back to the music. What kind of guitars do you play? Well, on the road right now, I'm playing a uh, 2002 uh, Fender Telecaster. I play a um, 2017 uh, Taylor five string. It's the only one that they've ever made. Acoustic 320 series that they built for me. Um, I also play a custom five string Newman guitar, electric guitar, that they also built for me. So I've uh, I've got some really great guitars I play. I love to play through uh, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe amplifiers. So uh, I'm really hoping Fender will send me a bunch of guitars after seeing this interview. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any formal music training growing up? Well, yeah, I, I do. Not in classrooms per se, but I was on the road with my dad. and I always uh, went through and listened to all the music, and I got to hang out with a lot of musicians. Yeah, I was a musician. Sure, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was pretty much raised. I didn't know that people didn't write music or play instruments until I was in middle school. I didn't know that there was other things you could do. I mean, your, your songs and your singing, definitely a lot of blues in there and gospel. And, sure. Uh, what, what were the big influences uh, as you were growing up? Well, I loved... Uh, I love Motown music, Bob Seger, Led Zeppelin. Uh, my list is uh, pretty incredible as far as my influences. Uh, I'd say it started with my dad, though. He was a singer, and he really influenced me and, and uh, taught me to listen to a lot of different kinds of music. I was raised on 50s and 60s music, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, for my brother's record collection, I got into the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And then, uh, you know, I was in love with the Seattle. When Seattle Grunge came Seattle out, Grunge, I was in love yeah. with that, you know, because I was, well, I was, I was in a hair band, and we yeah. were doing that, and then these guys came out, and we're like, what the hell is going on, but, you know, it was like Skid Row was the king dingling one week, and then the next week was Nirvana. You ever seen that documentary uh, about their record labels, like, Skid Row posters was all over the studio, and, and in the record label uh, office, and then, like, one day, they were all torn down, and it was all, they went in the next day, it was all Nirvana. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what's going on around here? <laughs> well, so... How did you end up on The Voice? Um, you were mentioning it's kind of a long road. You were gigging a lot. And sure. You mentioned well, American Idol. Well, uh, you know, Misty taught me, my wife taught me into going on The Voice. We were playing back in Texas. We were doing five nights a week. We were making a living, paying bills, so I was happy. I felt like that was success as far as I was concerned. Uh, but, you know, we had aspirations of uh, getting out and going national. And so the quickest way we could do it was through this social media platform obviously so we took advantage of what was available just like anybody else would have done uh, luckily we got on the show and I had a plan my plan was to sing female songs with a male vocal and put my own arrangement to them so that they would seem like a brand new song yet people would be super familiar with the material so and that actually worked out for me uh, I was able to do a Christian song on there which I didn't think they were gonna let me do because it said Jesus and me and Jesus that. over like, 50 times I thought for sure Ooh. network TV would let me do it but they did, and uh, you know, so we're just thankful to have the opportunity to go out, and and uh, we picked up CAA Nashville, which is one of the biggest agencies in the world for artists. We're on their roster, and we're proud to say that we consider them family. We know the the whole team very well. The CEO John Huey is one of my best friends, and they really take care of us. And we're just we're just thankful to be able to go on the road and meet meet people like you and, and Fred, and and uh, build a big family out here. Now, I live in Virginia. You come to Virginia? We have. We come through Virginia. Next time we come through, I'm going to call you make sure I get your number. I'm going to get you. <laughs> so what, what's, up, what's, what's up next for Sunday? Uh, the record Stained Glass and Neon is out Friday. We're on tour for the rest of my life if things work out right. Um, we have a large tour we're going to announce through CAA probably in the middle of next month. Uh, and so, you know, it's just hit the ground running and do it, do it all over again. Get in the bus and go from town to town playing music, trying to build a family out on the road. Great. It's awesome to meet you. Thank you. I'm really glad uh, Kate Snipes brought you here to the SHOT Show. And, uh, sure, yes. This is a great opportunity. And 
best of luck with your career yes, going sir. forward. Thank so, you, buddy. All right, man. Thanks.